Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to look at a Samsung servo and the model number is 260 and it's a power amplifier. Although I mentioned that it is a power amplifier if you look at the documentation often you'll see that it's referred to as a studio monitor type amplifier. In terms of general specifications power output RMS is 130 watts two times into four ohm speakers and then there is reduces down to 90 watts times two if you connect 8 ohm speakers. And then frequency response is 20 Hz to 50 kHz. And total harmonic distortion comes in at 0.2%. And then because this amplifier is a DC servo type, that just simply means that it monitors the DC offset on the output and then will provide a feedback so that DC offset is then controlled. So the maximum plus or minus would be 50 millivolts. And because this is classified as a studio amplifier or power amplifier, on the rear you have two types of connections, so you can have an unbalanced RCA connection or a balanced quarter inch or 6.3 millimeter jack connection. And then for your indication you have input clipping and then this will actually come on if total harmonic distortion exceeds 0.03%. And then for the LED idle indication, this will only illuminate if the input signal reaches at least 50%. In terms of protection you have both current and thermal protection and then in the event of either of one of these triggering you'll have the front panel protection LED and then the power indication as you can see that is actually integral into the on off push button and then overall dimensions height wise it comes in at 89 millimeters with a width of 482 and then you have a depth coming in at 241 the weight of the amplifier is 7.7 .7 kilograms with regard to the volume controls as with any studio or power amplifier, you have independent volume controls for both channel 1 and channel 2. What you'll also notice as well, that you have a dent operation on the volume controls. And that simply means that it will index. So they are termed as 41 dent. And as you rotate, you'll get this indexing, which is quite a nice positive feedback to the operator. Now, when you look from the top of the amplifier, of course, this is not like a hi-fi amplifier. So the design is very different. Of course, normally with a hi-fi amplifier, you often have multiple input connections coming directly in. And then you'll have all of the associated circuit for the tone control and such like. When you get into this area, what you'll see often is, as we've already described, balanced and unbalanced type inputs. And then what you can see towards the rear of the amplifier are the banks of power output transistors. So what you have are complementary pairs and you have Toshiba 2SA1943s and Toshiba 2SC5200. And these are very, very common output transistors or audio output transistors. And of course, they're readily available. What I would also make a point of, and I've mentioned this in multiple tutorials, if you are repairing any piece of electronic equipment, just be aware on where you source components. If you try and source them maybe from the Far East, you may see that the price seems to be extremely good, but that's normally because the devices that you're purchasing are counterfeit. So always make sure that you source from reputable suppliers. At the back, just above the power output transistors, you can also see where you have the thermal device, which is connected, and of course it's monitoring the overall temperature of the heatsink. The other point to emphasize here is that there is no cooling fan. All of the cooling is done via the large heat sink at the rear. In a studio environment, that's excellent because you don't have any noise associated with a rotating fan. Now there's actually two types of faults that manifest themselves with this particular amplifier and also many of the other Samsung servo amplifiers within the range. What I'm showing you here is the large EI type transformer and it is substantial so of course that what brings in the overall weight of the amplifier. The most common issue that you get with the transformer is that when you power up the amplifier with no signal connected what you'll often hear is quite a loud humming noise and of course that will be dependent on the mains frequency so it could be a 50 hertz or 60 hertz mains power hum. And the reason for that is that the actual laminates inside of the transformer have become loose. Now during manufacture what they use is a shellac and that enables them then to dip the transformer in and then what that will then do is during the curing process it will lock together all of the laminates. Now what happens over time is because of the frequency and the resonation it causes the plates to start to move and then the shellac then breaks apart. And then you have this situation where the plates then are resonating. So you can imagine inside of a studio if you hear this very very loud humming noise Maybe it sounds, you know, a little bit like a power substation. That's the last thing that you want. 
Now you'll know this straight away because if you just power up the amplifier and you can hear within the case this large humming noise then you know you have that issue. For myself I hold in stock a toroidal equivalent for this particular transformer so sometimes as the need arises I will replace it then with a toroidal type. I have in the past been sent these transformers away for re shellacking and then curing but when they come back sometimes you see minimal improvement but overall you do need to just swap it out. Now the main issue with the amplifier as in this case and this is the most common one is associated with the speaker protection relay. Now the complete for the customer or the operator will be that they have intermittent loss of sound and that is due to the worn contacts and oxidized contacts of the relay. Now when you look from the top of the amplifier what you need to do is have of course the volume controls pointing towards you and you'll find that the location is right towards the back rear right hand side and if you just look down behind the power input connector you'll see this relay and then what you need to do is to replace it and then here what I'm showing you is the circuit board which has then been lifted up. So the way in which you'll get access to this relay is that you need to remove the fixing screws on the left and right hand side of the amplifier. And then there is also a series of fixing screws underneath. And then on the top you have a number of larger screws. Some of them come with anti-slip washers. And you also need to remove the screw which is connecting the bridge rectifier to the small heatsink. And then the next thing you have to do is just disconnect some of the wiring and associated connectors that go to the front controls. And then you're able to lift up the circuit board. So here what I've done is I've just drawn a circle around the solder pins of the relay. The straightforward task is that you need to desolder and replace the relay. Now the relay is very common so it's not an expensive relay. Um, what I show you here is an extract from the service manual. So this area here is a speaker protection circuit. So you have the dedicated integrated circuit. And as I'm highlighting is that the contacts here will become worn and then oxidized, resulting in this intermittent loss of sound. And then your specifications for your relay, it is a 24 volt DC coil and it's a double pole relay, single throw, independent contacts, one for left and one for right. And your overall current rating for your contact switching is 5 amps. So once that has been replaced then that will eliminate the issue associated with intermittent sound loss. And then here what you see is the original relay that has been removed. Now on many of the Samsung servo amplifiers sometimes they will come up for sale on auction websites and commonly this will be the fault description that you will see. If you already own one of these amplifiers Myself, personally, I've worked on a lot of these. I do think it's a very, very fine amplifier. It's very, very robust, well built. And for the cost of a few euros, a few dollars or a few pounds, you can restore the amplifier back to normal operation. And there's no need to go to an expensive replacement or upgrade. Now, as with all amplifiers, I've heard this throughout all of the tutorials that I put together. When you've got the amplifier circuit board up, Take some time just to check across the circuit board just to ensure that you don't have any dry joints. And on this amplifier you do get them. So what I do is I just scan each one of the solder connections and what I'll then do is just take solder and then I will re-solder any connections which look to be grey coloured i.e. they have been associated with maybe power components and you see this discoloration or sometimes around the mechanical stress parts interconnectors, for example speaker terminals or speaker jacks, input jacks, you again will find dry joints so you need to resolder them. What you'll also find as well is when you turn the amplifier around on the right hand side looking from the rear you'll have this small circuit board here and this is your input RCA socket connectors and what I've done is I'm just highlighting that you just need to remove the fixing screw, lift it up and again you'll often find dry solder joints on these RCA connectors here. What's probably a little bit tricky, the metal chassis plate at the rear sort of has that lip on it. So you just need to peer underneath to get access to all of the connections. But once you do that, that just ensures that you have some integrity back on all the solder connections. And you're not going to have a secondary issue which is associated with bad solder joints. And then here what we're doing is we're just looking again from the rear of the amplifier towards the front. And what you can see on the right hand side is one of the volume control potentiometers. So we have a terminology where we refer to the number of gangs. So here these are single gang potentiometers. So you have individual potentiometers, one for channel 1, channel 2, left and then right. But they're not what we term as dual gang. Normally with hi-fi amplifiers, often these are dual gang type potentiometers. Here only single gang. 
And the reason why I'm highlighting is in a moment we'll just show a, a zoomed in view of that potentiometer and we'll just refer to it when we talk about the cleaning. What you can also see as well is there is a multitude of wires. So when you look at the larger or thicker cables, the red and blue cables, those are the cables that come from each of the audio output stages and it connects via a multi-pin connector, four pin, towards the rear where the speaker protection relay is. And then you can also see that you have interconnecting plugs and connectors from the EI power transformer. And then what you will have disconnected previously is a secondary connection from the power transformer coming in near to the bridge rectifier. And then also the signal connectors and the LED connectors which connect to the main board. Now always take the time to clean any user controls. Now here there aren't any additional switches, there's just purely the two volume control potentiometers. So it's very, very easy. You just simply spray into the access hole that you can see there. Deoxid, just wait maybe 30, 40 seconds just for the liquid to start to work. And then as I've always described in the tutorials, with the amplifier switched off, you can just rotate those volume control knobs at the front backwards and forwards multiple times. And that will ensure that all the oxidization is removed. Here what we're showing you is that first of all the left hand channel bank of power output transistors and as I said earlier these are Toshiba devices and they are 2SA1943 and 2SC5200 complementary pair and you'll find these in any type of power amplifier and I would say they're probably the most common types and they are bipolar transistors as opposed to MOSFET devices which you can also find in high powered output amplifiers. And then here you can see the right hand channel. Now what's interesting is that when I came to check the bias for this amplifier, it was running very, very high, particularly on the right hand channel. It was kind of almost up to about 230 odd millivolts. And you can actually hear the transformer even under idle with no speakers connected, no signal at all. You could hear a hum. So it was already delivering, you know, quite high current because that output stage was over biased. Here, what I've done is I've connected to the left hand channel. And again, it is relatively high. Now, when you look from the top of the board, what they've done is they've soldered two sets of links for each one of the channels. So it will actually say test point for the left channel, positive, negative, and then you will also see the same then for the right hand channel. So here what I've done, as always, is to take an extract from the schematic. Now the schematic that's available in the public domain, I would say is probably not the highest quality. So I do apologize here that if you try and zoom in to try and get, for example, more clarity on some of the resistance values or the actual item number or device number, which is normally written onto the board, it's not going to be very easy to do. But the point of this is really just to highlight to you for this amplifier, it did require the output bias resetting for the left and the right channel. Now again, what is a little bit odd, you sometimes find it, is that when you look at the schematic, nowhere does it actually detail what the correct bias setting should be. Um, with Samsung, the company has been acquired at different times. And in more recent times, if you sort of email through, and I believe it goes through to the United States, you can contact Samsung Technical. Um, even like Samsung Technical say, yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't have really a lot of information on this. Because I think during the different times the company was acquired, different manufacturers were involved and the documentation was probably not the best. So what is the correct bias setting? Well, the general rule of thumb which came back from Samsung is to set a nominal 25 milliamps through the emitter resistor. So that is what was done. Now, remember with the emitter resistors, they are in series and the value of the emitter resistors here is 0.27 ohms. So we just add those together because it's going in series. And then that gives us a bias value of 13.5 millivolts. But of course, as with any bias setting, you have a degree of tolerance. So if you wanted to adjust that to 14 millivolts, that would be fine. Now, these preset potentiometers on the board are quite cheap, to be honest. They haven't been fitted very well at all. So I just took the time just to desolder them and just sort of straighten them up because one was almost sort of half hanging out the board, but still soldered. And then clean them with a deoxid and then put them back. Leave the amplifier running probably for about 20-25 minutes. Remember with the initial setting that I saw, because it was so high, the heatsink at the rear of the amplifier was very hot. So what I did there was I just turned them down. So we were probably about 10 millivolts that I was reading and then let the amplifier warm through. And then as I said, after probably 20-30 minutes, I could then make the file adjustment to bring it up to about 13.5 millivolts, first on the left channel and then on the right channel. And then really the final stage of the service arm repair is really just to put the amplifier under test 
And as always, this amplifier went through a number of set routines just to verify total harmonic distortion, for example. And there was no problems found with the amplifier. And it was just given a deep clean just to bring it back cosmetically looking as good as it could be. So that sort of brings us to the end of this repair tutorial. So as always, I appreciate you stopping by. And if you require any further information or you have any questions, by all means, email audio amplifier servicing at AOL.com. And I'll be more than happy to come back to you and provide any guidance, support that you may require. So until the next time, I wish you all the very best. Cheers and bye bye.